everyone, Paul I Sam. Welcome to another Act of Pen Chuck Day before we get going today. So, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications, get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So then, it's been a busy old few weeks. I've got a couple of things to talk about before we get into this. I'll try not waffle on for ages, but you know what's going to happen. It's me. So, first off, Friday night, for the last two months, myself and more than some of the guys out there, and Mark and myself, have been planning for our Models for Heroes charity auction. There was some absolutely astounding stuff donated by everybody out there. And on Friday night, we absolutely knocked it out of the park. Our previous, I think, total last year, was 3,200 and if we'd have got anywhere near that or matched it I think we all would have been very very happy but no we absolutely smashed it out of the park and made over 5,400 pounds which is remarkable everybody out there dug deep on the night we had a great night busy auctions some fantastic lots were sold some great stuff and um, what a night very humbling as usual and just to see some community spirit and charitable spirit as well. Um, very, very proud of what we achieved that night. So thank you everybody out there. From Malcolm and his team to my guys, um, all the lads from the live show and the hangout group as well. People behind the scenes like Ian Douthwaite. Um, people who helped share the links around. Who joined us on the night, took part in the chat. Who bid on items and for people out there who made the cash donations there was some big independent cash donations um, and I gotta say mostly thanks to um, Michael I'm gonna butcher your name buddy Chanowski I always ruin that name and Brian Wimmel who made some very very generous donations thank you very much guys people in the auction were buying lots uh, people like Sam and I think Rich Blondin did it as well and we were donating the items back to Models for Heroes or offering them back up for auction after paying their um, donation. So, mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. I bought a couple, of, a couple of items as well. I got the, um, oh my god, I think it was Hasegawa. Oh, you know what? I've even forgot what it was. It was just a pretty looking car and a bit on in one. And I got a couple of die-cast P47s. Hopefully they'll be here in a few days. Um, and please be patient with us here as they've got a lot of parcels to get out. But what a fantastic night. And I think it was just over three hours we raised. Um, it was like just under five. And then with the rest of the donations that came in over the next couple of days and payments, uh, Malcolm says the total was 5 4. So amazing, absolutely amazing work for a fantastic charity. I thank you to everyone from the smallest donation up to the biggest help of all absolutely fantastic Ian Dalthwaite went above and beyond to get three kits um, signed by the rally drivers themselves who drove the kits two of the kits went all the way to Sardinia I think it was to be signed by the drivers and came back and they were auctioned off and made good money as well uh, myself and the La sorry myself and the hangout guys bought those kits for Ian to send off and get signed and Sam being Sam, bought a Metro 6R4, and that was signed by Malcolm Wilson himself. Um, so some people have got some very nice little uh, memorabilia there to keep. Um, so very, very good. But yeah, what a night. Absolutely superb. Well done, everybody. And uh, here's to the next one. So yeah, that one will be put to good use and help um, that charity and its beneficiaries immensely. So thank you all very, very much. It was a tiring night, and I felt a bit drained on Saturday. Um, but well worth it all day long. We're always there to support that charity. Malcolm and his guys and girls out there do phenomenal work. So well done. Thank you, everybody. Second news I mentioned on the live show a while back, and a few men noticed a post on the website about ISM moving warehouses. So for the past five years, Hannah and myself, way more in Hannah's favour, has dealt with the postage and packing of umpretail.com. From here, from our home, um, 
just done a sterling work, especially through COVID when everything, I've mentioned the name now, there's my, my video demonetizing, I'm going to bleep that out. During the dilemma pandemic that happened, um, we had a huge influx in orders and it just went absolutely crazy. And Hannah managed to cope and get caught up pretty quickly, I think, considering. And uh, when, you, when you consider when Hannah took over five years ago, we'd had 2,000 orders for UMP. We've now had 16,000. That's a lot of orders to deal with um, over those five years. Um, UMP's grown substantially over that time. Our stock level has grown. And what started off in a room this big, then ended up in our house, which started with stock, then ended up in a storage unit as well, ended up in our summer house outside, various storage boxes around. It just took over our lives. It was crazy. And we literally couldn't grow anymore. Lee was coming back to the UK. Uh, if you know Lee, Lee's listened out in Spain for the past six years, I think it is. And he's moved back to the UK. He's bought a house with bigger premises and outbuildings. And Lee is now in charge of all the postage and packing. Um, and literally yesterday, drove down. We've literally filled up his long wheelbase from Safety Sprinter, uh, high roof. If you know how big they are, you understand how much stuff we actually had. And it was crazy. It's been very, very busy. Uh, poor Hannah's absolutely worked her socks off again over the last week, getting everything packed up and ready to go. Hopefully this is now step four for UMP because Lee and his helper, Joe, I think his name is, uh, it is Joe, um, can now focus on um, potion packing. We can grow a bit more. We can get more stock. Me and Hannah at this end can deal with what we need to do because obviously we're still got things to do. Hannah's still on the payroll. Um, and hopefully we can grow, push forward, get bigger, get more products, get more stock. You'll know from watching there are new products due out and they're in the process now because we've got more time to do them. And not only that, we get our house back. James is six, my little boy is six. He's never known our house to not be full of boxes. Like our hallway had three by three boxes all on the floor, stacked too high sometimes. Of stock that was coming in, products coming in, boxes going out. We, we were sending 30 parcels out a day sometimes, and it does take over and become the norm. Um, so we get that back. Obviously, other things have changed, which isn't going to be great, but it's just one of those things. Um, so, if, like I say, it's a step forward for us and we can progress, and hopefully, it'll give me more time to make more videos as well because I get disturbed all day long by something needing checking off. Is this postage right? Do you know this person? Does this need doing? And that's just how it is when you run a business from home. Now Lee's taking over that side. Hopefully it'll free up a bit more time for our family, get our life back a little bit, and give me more time in here and making more videos because time's spread everywhere at the minute. And hopefully that's it. So yeah, it's a bit strange. As Hannah said yesterday, doing no post seems a bit weird. Um, but like we say, it should be a step forward. And hopefully we can progress, move on and develop into a bigger, more efficient company. So there we are, that is that. Um, I can hear the jungle drums going, oh my God, they're quitting. Oh. Um, but yeah, that's it. So keep ordering from us. Telford weekend will have been this weekend. For any trader, that is a huge weekend. It's gone, that's gonna absolutely cripple us. <laughs> so if you're thinking of spending any money, please come over to upretail.com because we need as much support as we can, because no Telford is a huge loss in take-ins for us. Huge. Um, so if you're thinking about any models, please come to us, umpretail.com. Have a look. We're a little bit low on stock of tools in that minute because we was moving, we'd stopped ordering things because it was less to move. But that will slowly increase now as we put orders in. But our basic items, UMP items, kits, loads of them in stock. So like I say, if you think of spending a bit of money, because obviously Telford's cancelled and the old pandemic lockdowns back again um yeah please come over and spend and support our business which you have done i say spend so support our small business because small businesses need help now especially local businesses as well uh, don't just go to amazon i'm a corporate as well support your local independent companies whether they be online or a bricks and mortar shop support local businesses because they are going to need it now more than ever uh, and as a small business and having had a business for the last uh 17 years i've been self-employed um it matters immensely so yeah support your local businesses whether it be online or a bricks and mortar shop 
just help them out because they need all the help they can get. Right, so that is that. Now, with us going into lockdown for the next month, <laughs> it's going to be longer than a month, um, I might start up, it won't be daily, but I might add an extra couple of mornings a week in, doing a bit of a live stay at the bench like we used to. If I do it every day, I think it might reduce the number of videos and we're back to square one again with my free time. So I don't want to commit to it being every day, but I think we'll at least do a couple of days a week. Starting next week, we'll do Friday and Sunday as usual. And then I think a couple of days next week. I think maybe we'll pick like Tuesday and Thursday or something like that. We'll, we'll pick a couple of days. Um, it's quiet in the morning at the minute in the Hangouts because a lot of people are at work still. Um, other people's commitments have changed uh, and situations. But there should at least be me and Alan there, that is for sure. Mr. McNeish. So you can come and join us, have a bit of a chat and do a bit of a modelling with us. So that is that. The other thing that's going to change as well is a Sunday hangout and I'm going to be 10 a.m. That night, the dirty things killed us. It's too early on a Sunday morning. Every time I come here, I'm half asleep and I just could do that extra half hour to wake up, have some breakfast and crack on with things. And away we go. Right, there we go. That's most of the waffle done. I've got a few questions to ask after we do this segment and come back. Um, it's mainly about the channel and a bit of input from you guys and girls out there as well. So let's have a look at the recently finished Ravel Chevy Impala. This is the video build, three part video build, it's on the channel. You can go and have a look at that now. Um, it's an older kit, 24 years old I believe this boxing is. I think the actual kit's older than that. But it went together pretty well. I really can't fault it. It's made a nice little video build. It's a beautiful looking car. I've got some great pictures of it we'll show in a minute. If you've watched the video build, you've seen it. But as always, I always repeat them in this and I will go through it quickly. So once a free video build over on the channel, on this channel. If you go back and look for the playlist that's in there, let's go have a look at that. Have a look at how things are done. Um, and give me some feedback on the videos as usual. So let's jump straight in. I'm going to pop some pictures up on screen and we'll have a bit of a waffle about it. So 25th scale Revel. Chevy Impala. As soon as I saw this box art, I thought, I've got to buy this. That's a lovely looking car. I've even cut the box work out. When you come back to me, you'll see it in the background. Um, so this was primed in a Tamiya light grey primer. It was base coated in TS41 coral blue. We burn metal foiled all the chrome work before 2K this time because somebody recommended it. And then we 2K'd it in Gravity Spain 2K clear which worked phenomenal as usual, a few dust spots which I had to take care of, and the burn metal foil looked great underneath it, so I've got no issues doing that. It was also given a panel line wash before the 2K, uh, and again, lovely, lovely looking car, and a beautiful colour, which Chunk, gets a mention again, recommended to me, and thank you very much buddy, perfect recommendation. So my only criticism of this kit is the wheels, and somebody else pointed it out as well, the wheels do not match the box art, they're a lot bigger on the box art, and they are quite small, the box, so it's a bit disappointing, but it's just one of those things. If we can try and source some wheels of the same type, but bigger, if anyone knows of anywhere I can get them, please let me know, because I would like to change them over, but I don't be faffing around with fitting them, so they need to be a pretty straightforward fit onto the Revel push fit clips as such. Um, interior is painted in LP39. We flocked the carpet with the uh, embossing powder as usual. And then the engine was painted in Tamiya. I'm going to have to look at my paint rack. I think it was TS. No, it's not. It's LP. I think it was 51, to be honest. I think it was LP 51 orange. Uh, various metals used and LP 5, semi-gloss black here and there. And, yeah, we left a kit chrome work. We just added a wash to it all to get any highlights in there. And what a fantastic looking car. Beautiful car. And for an older kit, it turned out really, really well. So very, very happy with that indeed. So there we go, there's the Impala, another American car, I've got a few more on the stash as well. Um, I've actually been enjoying building them and they seem to get good views on the channel as well, which is pretty decent. So with that build out of the way, let's go and have a look what is currently in, in progress and a few kits that I've been buying and been bought as well. Right then, let's start off with what we've been building um, and then we'll move on to what I've been buying as well. I've got quite a lot to show this time. Uh, which makes a change because I don't normally have a lot of uh, shite that's talking, that's rubbish. Okay, let's start with what's in progress at the minute and then we'll move on to what I've been buying or been bought this month as it happens to be. Very, very lucky. 
Um, so this is from my Ferrari group build over on the ISM forum. It ends in ooh, 10 days. So I've got 10 days to get this finished, which I should do, no problem at all. This is Fujimi's 24 scale F12 Berlinetta Ferrari. Lovely kit. We went through this kit a while back in a bench update and I showed all the aftermarket, uh, well it's not aftermarket, it's the photo etch extras that come with the kit and the mask and yeah, fully loaded kit, absolute brilliant and you pick these up for 45, 50 quid and they're worth the money all day long. It's a beautiful kit um, and it looks to be building well. So this has been primed in UMP uh, Pink Primer, it was base coated in Tamiya TS8, uh, which is Italian red, which was decanted and airbrushed through the Apex. Uh, so I'm giving a panel line wash and then we gave it some um, Gravity 2K Clear. This is straight out of the gun. I haven't touched this yet. As you see, we've got a few dust spots on the bonnet um, and it all needs taken back, flattening and polishing up. But it'll look good once it's done. And yeah, it seems to be a good kit so far. It's got opening and closing doors. Um, as you can see here, the fit doesn't look too bad on them. I have very quickly test fitted them. And it actually doesn't seem to be too bad. It could be worse. Yeah, that's it. They go on pretty well. Not too bad at all. And like I say, the bonnet opens. It's got the full um, engine in there and everything. And yeah, it looks a great kit. So that's all the body work done. Got the doors painted up. Uh, they were clear coated ooh, just over a week ago, I think. Mirrors are done. We've got the chassis all uh, assembled. There's only a couple of parts to go on there. And that's been painted, uh, primed and painted as well. In black, uh, we have all the running gear components. Um, so we have the engine, all its ancillary components, intakes, air filters. We've got the wheel arches, brake discs, all painted up there. I didn't go the metal ones, the PE ones. Um, they just didn't seem to fit onto the plastic hub properly. Um, with the actual caliper on, they didn't seem to sit central. A little bit weird, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But these are all been painted up. These are ready for detail painting and assembling. So nice part there. We'll pick some nice colours for these. We've got some carbon effect from Zero Paints there as well on the discs. Uh, so once they're detail painted up, they'll look pretty good. And then we've got our brake calipers, which we've done in LP21. So they're, they it's a gloss paint, but I think I will gloss them as well. We'll give it a... Uh, LP9 or TS13 gloss coat and then the uh, engine covers same paint right as you can see I've gone over those with a flat clear from the LP range I think it's LP23 to help dull it down because on the real car it's not a high shine so it'll give a bit of contrast between the high shine body and the engine covers and that's it that's where we're out of that so we've got all this detail paint up assembled and get all the running gear on and ready to go they move on to the interior um, and then move on to finish the rest of the build. So we are getting there. So this is all currently being safely kept in its box. And I'll give you a little tip on these boxes. You've seen me use these before to keep the body working. Um, I kept the Impala in here while I was building it. And I did a silly mistake of the day I glued the interior to the chassis with CA glue, I popped it in this box. And lo and behold, I opened the box the next day. And the whole thing is covered in my fingerprints because you've also probably seen the old CSI trick using CA glue for fingerprints. Yep. Well, the vapor certainly worked in there, that's for sure. So yeah, my fingerprints were all over this. Um, and it did cause a panic for a few minutes and then I thought it'll polish off and thankfully it did. So I'm gonna pop all these in here for safekeeping and then we'll come back in a minute and have a look what I've been buying. Right then, so kits, what have we been buying? Well, I bought a few. I've been given a load as well because it's my birthday in 10 days. Um, on the 14th of November, the day we should end the Ferrari build. And some crazy friends have sent me some stuff. Some as gifts, some I bought myself. And there's an extra special one at the end, which we're going to have a chat when we go back to me in a minute about. So, uh, stuff, mostly Ferraris and Porsches because <laughs> I got a bit of a mission this month. But this was given to me by my good friend Mike. This is a kit I've been after for a long, long time. I can't remember if I explained it or not, but long story short, Mike gave me a bike kit a long time back. I sold all the bike kits. I'm not going to sell a gift. So I sent it in back. Very, you know, not you know being disrespectful or unappreciative, but it's just like, I'm not going to sell it, mate. I'm not going to build it. 
have it back. And for some reason, he sent me this. He's a madman. This kit's one I've been after for a while. It's hard to find. It goes for silly money. And, you know, you're crazy, Mike. You really are. I've showed it a few times, but it's still there in the bottom of the pile over on my right where the new kits go before they get put in the stash. And I thought only fit to, to show it. So thank you very much, Mike. It's a lovely kit. I built the Martini version of this of McRae's car. Um, so it's basically the same kit, just a different decal scheme, I think. Uh, but it's one I've been after for a while. So thank you very much, Mike. You are absolutely crazy, but an absolute star at the exact same time. Um, another one I wanted, saw this. Uh, 355, always love the 355 Fujimi kit, quite a basic kit, there's no extras in here It's just a box full of plastic, but that 355 shape's absolutely stunning It's a great looking car, and in this cup, is it cup challenge? No, it's challenge uh, And it's racing, it's got a roll cage, single seat, some decals on it as well And these beautiful white rims as well, beautiful white five spoke speed lines It's nice and slammed, hopefully the real kit will be able to build it, and that's a beauty that um, I bought this, oh god, it was weeks ago now. Um, I was watching one second hand for 35 and I got a new for 30 from somewhere. Um, but that was weeks ago I bought that. Take a while, come on. It didn't take a while to come, but it certainly felt like it. So, first of the gifts from my crazy friend Sam. I was watching these on eBay and um, showed him one night and he went and bought them for me. He's a madman, really is. 348, one of the best look target top uh, Ferraris, in my opinion. Absolutely beautiful. Again, just a plastic kit, quite basic, um, but should go together quite well. Beautiful looking car. I think you get the option of the Targa with and without. Um, so very, very kind. This and the other one we'll show in a minute. I'll show you next, actually. That and that with the detail ups that I'm about to show you were 39 quid posted on eBay, which is a bargain. So thank you, Sam. You're nuts, mate. And this one as well. 512 Testarossa, I suppose, isn't it really? Again, basic kit, pretty nice kit though, uh, and it comes with this beautiful, quite elaborate photo etch set from Hobby Design. So, several sheets of PE in there. Like I say, those two kits and the PE set, which is worth 25 quid on its own, um, 39 quid, good, good price. They are pretty well priced these Fujimi kits sometimes. You can get a bargain. Some of them are ludicrously expensive, which we're going to get to next. Um, but on the whole, they're quite simple kits. The only thing that always lets Fujimi de uh, kits down is the decals. They're always a nightmare. Um, even our extra strong solution struggles with them sometimes. But thank you very much, Sam. Two beautiful Ferraris. The 512 is a cracking looking car. Um, looks better from behind, in my opinion. Good looking car. But thank you, buddy. Another one from Sam, because he's mad. A cat I've been after for ages. Missed out on one I should have bought a while back, because I'm an idiot. Well, I didn't have the money, to be honest. And this from Hobby Link Japan was £38 posted. That was £18 posted. So I went for the speedy option. It arrived in about four days. Um, if you chose a cheaper option and waited a bit longer, you get it for 30 quid. And again, pretty basic kit, but absolutely beautiful looking car. Really is a stunner. So thank you very much, Sam. I've been wanting this one for a while. I finally have one for the stash. Cheers, buddy. Uh, Porsches, so there's a Porsche group build anytime soon, as we will see, uh, and I've got a bit of a hunt for these. The Fujimi kits are really cheap, although whoever does their photos really needs to paint the interior of the cars, because that interior looks shocking, looks awful. This is an ultra basic kit, really not much in there at all. You get the little folded over roof bit as well, you get the actual roof and clear plastic too, so you can have it with the roof up or down. Um, very very basic kit, it does have a broken A pillar sadly which can be easily repaired but I got this on eBay for 15 quid, absolute you know, cheapest chips kit and a great looking Porsche as well. Next up, another step higher is one of Fujimi's uh, Enthusiast kits. So these were a lot more detailed, as you saw that box there was not in it. In this one there was a hell of a lot more, it's got a fully detailed engine. As you can see, it is pretty well detailed. There's loads of sprues in there, hence why they're called enthusiast kits. They're meant to be okay. They're old, they're not new. Uh, they've been out for quite some time. They're a book to get back in the box as well. Um, but yeah, it looks a decent kit. It's an old one. 
but you know it's a classic poor shape there's classic rims as well which you'll see on this next kit too beautiful really nice kit this one was 25 pounds on ebay so another good buy as well so lovely looking car as you can see everything the trunk and hood or boot or bonnet to be british opens up and yeah a nicely detailed kit really cool they are this one i've been after for a while as well these original rs porsches uh, are just stunning in white and uh, red i'm not keen on white cars but i think this one does need to be done in white and red it's a great looking kit this is one of the enthusiast kits as well this is the modern day reboxing so you don't get all the fancy packaging in there sadly you get a load of decals although we're discussing that these carreras need to be in black uh, and another colour as well, so you can do different colour schemes. But it is what it is, they are in there. And like I say, this is only enthusiast kit, so it's the same kind of spec as that last one, just without the fancy plastic, um, sorry, cardboard packing in there. So yeah, it'd be another nice kit. There's those beautiful rims, again. Um, kind of synonymous with the RS Porsches. Beautiful, so lovely kit. This wasn't cheap. And again, I bought this a few weeks back. Um, I think that was about 40 quid. Can't remember them. But it's a new tooling and a beautiful, beautiful kit as well. And the last 24 scale Porsche I got off Amazon. They're cheap, 20 odd quid posted. And it's a GT2. I just love that rear spoiler on it. Um, that is a good looking car. Be a good kit. It's basically the Tizan, the black Porsche, this one. It's basically that. Uh, but with a different spoiler, ever so slightly different spoiler. There's been another few variations in there, but as far as I'm aware, it's basically the same kit. I think you get different interior and bits and bobs, but it looks a lovely kit. Typical Tamiya kit, nice and simple, not too difficult to build, and you know it'll go together absolutely flawlessly. So those Fujimi kits will fight me a bit. Um, this will fall, I can literally shake that, da -da, it's done. Um, but a beautiful looking car as well, and I'm not sure the colour on that yet. Depends if I'll do the RS one, if I paint that white on that. Right, last but not least, I'm going to have to push up the cameraman to bear with me. And we'll zoom in a little bit more. There we go, bit OCD on my camera. I like it to be in its exact place, because we've got to fit this big boy in. So... I saw this the other week, mentioned, oh my god, I need to buy that. And that crazy man, man Sam, went and bought it for my birthday for me, because he's nuts. So this is uh, Fujimi's 16th scale Porsche 959 Sport. So, big old box, as you can see, my hands are not small. There's a can of Coke and a, a Tamiya bottle for reference. Um, so you can see just how big this thing is. It's not your standard size kit. And this is an enthusiast model as well. Um, it looks so cool, it really, really does. This is 130 quid, and Sam's an absolute lunatic, he really, really is. So, it's an older kit, I believe they're from 1985. Instructions, whilst nice and clear, are a little bit basic, but you can see that fully detailed engine. Um, uh, it's going to be a nice build. This, so, like I said, we're going to chat about this in a minute. We can have a little chat and have a little talk, but it looks a great kit. Um, <laughs> it just looks nice. These rims, I know Sam's not a fan of these. I actually like these wheels. I actually think they're pretty nice. If I zoom in a bit, you can see a bit better. Let's pull the lamp over. There we go. I actually quite like these wheels, personally. Again, they're synonymous with the 959. Synonymous the right word? I think it is, isn't it? I'm using the right word. Beautiful. The body shell. Needs a bit of clean up because it's got quite a bit of uh, seam work on it, but all bodies have anyway. But as you can see, it's a good size, but it's not overly, ridiculously big. As you see, it's got opening doors, boot, bonnet, trunk, hood, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it does look to be a great kit. Again, if you get a Tamiya bottle, a scale reference, you can see it there. So it's in between 24th and 12th, so not ludicrously big. But big enough to look A, cool, and B, um, you go to town detail in a bit, which we will do a little bit. But for a 1985 kit, sorry, I believe the 1985, it's a lovely kit. It really is nice. And there's a few of these out there. There's a few more I quite like to get as well, especially the Kuntesh. Really would like that one. Um, so, yeah, that's that. And then you get all the glass. Glass looks good. 
There's the doors, bonnet, boot, trunk, hood, seats. Now this is the extra sprue that comes with this one, which differentiates it from the standard one. This is for the sports, so you get different seats, mounts, center console, door cards. Um, I think the rest of it is the same as the other 959 kit. Uh, chassis, and then we've got all the engine parts and so on. Let me zoom out a touch, get the lamp out of the way. See, we're not really set up for wide angle things this big. Here we are. But again, plenty of detail in there. I have no idea there's any aftermarket for this. I've not seen anything. The tyres are there, nicely um, branded. Are they? Bridgestones, yeah. Very, very nice. Decals have yellow to touch, but we'll stick them in the window and hopefully, um, yeah, get them back to new. Fingers crossed we can. But overall, it looks a great kit. It really does, and I'm glad I've got it. And thank you very much, Sam. You're an absolute, you really are a lunatic. I've got him back. I bought my nice birthday gift. Um, and uh, I'll buy something for Christmas as well. Because he is a lunatic. He's very hard to buy for, like me. I'm rusting bags. You probably can't hear a word I'm saying. But for me, this is a beautiful kit. And um, as soon as we go back to me, any second now, we'll have a little chat about it. Right then, so there you go. That's the Ferrari, which is coming along a great, lovely kit. And a whole stack of kits that I bought and been bought by crazy people who I thank immensely. Uh, you're all mad. You really are mad. So, that leads me on to a couple of things. The next video build, I think it's going to be the Star Wars Snow Speeder from Bandai. Um, it's down there. I've been looking through it. I've been thinking, yeah, I don't want to do it. But I've got a question about it, um, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Uh, because I want some feedback on this. Um, after that, in a few weeks after the snow speed is done, we're going to start a Porsche group build. Like we did the Ferrari, but I think we'll make this a little bit longer. And I think this may be our Christmas build. Um, so it'll lead right up to New Year. So it'll give us almost six weeks. Maybe we'll go a bit longer. We'll see. We'll see. But the reason I'm asking about this is because I am considering, and I've just shown you this kit, video building that. that 12, you can see how big that is now, can't you? That 12, 16 scale Fujimi. Porsche 959. I am considering it because it's a lovely kit of a beautiful car and I don't think it'd be that bad to video build. It'd be more than three parts, probably going to be five or six. So yeah, let me know your feedback on that. I'm definitely going to do the snow speeder next, that is my plan, but I'm considering that one next. If not, it'll be the Tamiya GT2, which will still be a nice build, but I just think that would be a very cool build. So I'm mulling it over. That is, so let me know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on that one. Snow speed is definitely next. I'm going to start that uh, in the next couple of days. And this is where I want some feedback now and some questions. So without getting into the boohoo story, this channel we're, we're approaching fifty thousand subs, which is great. But we don't. I don't think we get the views or feedback that the channel kind of should get. I was going to say deserve, but that sounds a bit presumptuous then. Um, I know we're shunned by a lot of YouTubers. doesn't bother me. They can all go and do one. And that's because of UMP. They don't agree with us earning money off UMP. They don't like the fact of being admin on the site because they recommend other, part, other products being facetious and things like that. There's been a lot of history to all this crap. And I know we're shunned by a lot of the YouTube community, and I think that has an effect on the views and feedback to the channel. And what I've said before, if you've not heard it from my mouth, and you hear it from other people, come ask me my side of the story, and I'll tell you the truth on half of it. Because a lot of it's a load of crap, and a lot of it's made up. But that leads me on to the next thing. And this is going to be tricky. I'm not going to name any channels, and I'm not going to name any names. But there's channels out there that have got a tenth of our subscribers and get 100,000 views. So it's either one or two things. It's either my video build style, or it's me. If it's me, I can live with that. I'm an arsehole, I know I am, that's fine. Uh, if you don't like me, you don't like me, it's fine. I'm, I've always been like that and I don't really care. But if it's the way I'm doing the videos, let me know and I'll change it. Because these videos, I've got no talking in them whatsoever. They're not several parts. It's literally a 20 minute video, a complete build, two music, and it goes through, and I watched one the other day, it was a, 
can't remember what it was now. I think it was a Toyota Supra, and it had over a hundred thousand views. Um, whereas my videos get five thousand if I'm lucky. So you can see where I'm thinking here. What what's going wrong here? We even changed the tags on the video. I think we had too many tags in there for a while. So. Should I stick with my current format where we do the video build, I try and show everything I'm doing, I do a voiceover, explain things, and we do them in multiple parts? Or am I better just doing a 20 minute video of a few specific parts to music? I do it that way because that second one's a lot quicker for me to do. I don't think it'd be as enjoyable to do or make or watch, and I'm going to ask, be asked billions of questions over everything because nothing's explained. But we're going to get more views. Is that the way to go? I don't know. I like the way I do my videos at the minute, but I just don't think we're either getting the um, what's the, word, the coverage we should do. We're not getting the views. Do people not know about us? Or do people not like what I'm building? Or is it me? <laughs> Give me some feedback in the chat. If you're watching this, let me know. Should I stick with the current video build format? Should I do 20 minute videos to music? I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of them. I find them boring to watch. I end up drifting off and looking at my phone and go, oh yeah, that looks great, and coming back. And I miss half the video because there's nothing there to keep me focused on it. And the videos are good. I'm not, I am not slating the, the videos. There's a few people out there I've seen doing them. I need to get a quarter million views. And I've only got like 5,000 subscribers. So give me some feedback. Should I change what I'm doing? Should I stick with what I'm doing? Honest feedback, is there something you'd like to see me do differently? A way to change it? Should we let Warwick now? Not let Warwick do it. I'm not even going to mention that because no people will say yes. But give me some feedback. Let me know your thoughts on it. And let me know your thoughts on that 959 as well. I know everyone's going to say yeah because I know what you're all like. Um, but I'd just like to get more viewers and more feedback on the videos. Yes, I only build cars. But these are car videos as well. And they're getting ludicrous amounts of views. Um, so I don't know, don't know. Give me your feedback on that one, and uh, we'll have a think, and we'll have a look, and if something needs changing, we'll change it around, and away we go. And there we go. So if you made it this far, um, I did a little test again. If you made it this far, let me know in the chat the first model you ever built. We'll see how people get this far, because in the last video I did this, and very little people actually commented with the number I said. So it always lets you know where you're watching up to and what you're doing. Um, so yeah, let me know in the chat the first model you ever built. And as I say, give me any feedback, any comments or read, criticisms, I can take it on the chin. As long as you're not aggressive or abusive, that's fine. Um, but yeah, give us some feedback and don't forget, first model you ever built in the chat. And there we go. So I know someone's going to ask, it's been a few weeks, fish tank, doing really well. Um, I bought some water lettuce about two, three months ago, and they were literally like an inch. There was about six of them, and these things are crazy. They're, they're just immense. I've thrown so many of them away. Give some away. They're in James's tank in the house, which I need to sort in a bit, because that's just wild in there. Absolutely wild. Um, and I pulled this out of the tank the other day. This was a single inch plant about two months ago, and it's now multiplied into probably, I don't know, I think there's about four different plants there. Huge. I had to get out of the tank. It was taking all the light. I literally had to throw that plant away. It's a real shame. And the roots are getting onto 12 inches. They are immense. But the great thing about that plant in this aquarium is they absorb all the excess nutrients. So don't get any algae. They absorb all the ammonia from the fish and the waste and whatever. And that is what fills this, this tank. Uh, and it's thriving. As always, it's absolutely thriving. It's phenomenal in there. Um, the fish are healthy. The shrimp are healthy. I'm losing, one, I'm losing my red plant. I can't think what it's called now. And I know it needs iron and CO2. It's got all that, but it's still. I think it's just had it. It's wilting. So I'm thinking of getting rid of that one. We'll get a different red plant and try and see how it goes. But Quare doing great. If you think of doing one of these no filters, I highly recommend it. They do work very, very well with very minimal upkeep. All I tend to do is trim plants and do the cage change. Very simple. Keep everything fed. Keep the fish stocking level low. Shrimp are crazy. There's over 200 shrimp in there, as you all know, and it's thriving. So I'll stick up some very quick video because I don't want to bore you all while I'm chatting with this. Um, and that is that. So there we go. My timer was flashing. Time I've been waffling on for too long. It flashes at 23 minutes. Um, it always does. <laughs> so yeah, I think we'll call it there. A few questions for you in the chat there um, as you go through the video. Hopefully you've watched it. I hope so. Um, because that's another annoying point as well. And I'm going to say it. 
I put an hour long video up the other day of the Impala and it had been uploaded for 10 minutes and somebody put, that looks really good, well done. And I'm thinking, how the hell have you watched an hour long video in 10 minutes? So, if you're going to watch the videos, watch the videos and if you're not, don't comment after 10 minutes, at least wait a bit so I don't think, okay, you've not watched the video. Fair play. There we go, that's my moan for today. So yeah, I've walked on for a good half hour like I knew you would. But it's a venture update, it's been three weeks. Lots of different things to chat about. Like I say, got any comments, criticisms, suggestions, pop them in the chat. Be respectful, don't be an arsehole, because I do that enough for all of us. Um, and yeah, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, follow and leave a comment. Like I say, I do read and reply to them all. And uh, that is us for today. So the usual outro, don't forget to check out the Scale Model Facebook page or forum umpretail.com you get all the products um, I show in all my videos and the products are linked in the description of the video down below big long list you can go and look at in there check out the live the bench page and the offer hangout group for the live show news and the offer hangouts which go on every day free to join pop over and join us uh, and check out my Paul ISM Facebook page as well where my personal and modern work is shared like I say you've got any comments criticism feedback any ideas on the things I've talked about, please comment down below. I'm interested to hear everybody's opinion. And if we can improve things or change things for the better, we will. There we go. That's a lot of talking. That's 35 minutes worth of talking. Yeah, with that really bright light on, which drives me nuts. And no glasses. I should wear my glasses, but I don't. Like, I look like a gimp in them. So I don't wear them for the video, but I'm like this, looking at myself. There we go. Waffle all over the shop. I'll catch you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.